గుడ్ విషస్ టు ఆల్ ఆఫ్ యూ ఇండియాస్ ఏన్షియన్ పాస్ట్ చాప్టర్ ట్వంటీ ఎయిట్ బ్రాహ్మణైజేషన్ రూరల్ ఎక్స్పాన్షన్ అండ్ పీస్ అండ్ ప్రొటెస్ట్ ఇన్ ది పెనిన్షులా ద న్యూ ఫేస్ ద పీరియడ్ అనౌ డామినీ త్రీ హండ్రెడ్ టు సెవెన్ ఫిఫ్టీ మార్క్స్ ద సెకండ్ హిస్టారికల్ ఫేస్ ఇన్ ది రీజన్స్ సౌండ్ ఆఫ్ ది విందియాస్ ఇట్ కంటిన్యూడ్ సమ్ ఆఫ్ ది ప్రాసెసెస్ దట్ హ్యాడ్ బిగన్ ఇన్ ద ఫస్ట్ హిస్టారికల్ ఫేస్ టూ హండ్రెడ్ బీసీ టు అనౌ డామినీ త్రీ హండ్రెడ్ ఆఫ్ ది పెనిన్షులా it however shows some new features that were not regra- regarded as significant in earlier times the first phase shows the ascendancy of the shatavahanas over the deccan deccan and that of the tamil kingdoms over the southern districts of tamil nadu in that period northern tamil nadu south karnataka a part of um, southern maharashtra and the land between the godavari and the mahanandi broadly over alliances to the seats of political authority established outside their areas they themselves did not have their own states now in these areas and also in vidarbha between anno domin 300 to 600 there arose about two dozen states which are known to us from their land charters eventually by the beginning of the 7th century the pallavas of kanchi the chalukyas of badhami and the pandyas of madurai emerged as the rulers of the three major states the first historical phase is marked by numerous crafts internal and external trade widespread use of coins and a large number of towns trade towns and coinage seem to have begin have been in a state of decline in the second phase but in that phase numerous land grants free of taxes were made to the temples and brahmanas the grants suggest that many new areas were brought under cultivation and settlement this period be there for its a far greater expansion of agrarian economy we also notice the march of trimpant brahmanism in the first phase we encounter extensive buddhist monuments in both andhra and maharashtra cave inscriptions probably indicate the influence of jainism and also of buddhism in the southern districts of tamil nadu now however jainism was confined to karnataka and peninsula as a wall shows numerous instances of the performance of vedic sacrifices by the kings this phase also marked the beginnings of the construction of stone temples for shiva and vishnu in tamil nadu and tamil nadu under the pallavas and in karnataka under the chalukyas of badhami by the beginning of the second phase south india had ceased to be the land of megaliths and towards its end began the process that made it a land of temples culturally the dravidian element seems to have dominated the scene in the first phase but during the second phase aryanization and brahmanization came to the fore this happened because of land grants made by the rulers who were either brahmanas or firm supporters of them as managers of or uh, managers of temple lands the brahmanical guided cultural and religious activities they spread sanskrit which became the official language the ashokan inscriptions are found in andhra and karnataka show that the people knew prakrit in the 3rd century bc also epigraphs between the 2nd century bc and the 3rd century anadomni were largely written in prakrit the brahmi inscriptions that have been found in tamil nadu also contain prakrit words but from about anadomni 400 onwards Sanskrit became the official language in the peninsula and most characters were composed in it. States of the Deccan and South India. In northern Maharashtra and Vidarbha bearer the Shatavahanas were succeeded by the Vakatakas a local power the Vakatakas who were Brahmanas themselves are known from a large number of copper plate land grants issued by them. They were great champions of the brahmanical religion and performed numerous vedic sacrifices their political history is more like linked to north india than to south india we may recall how chandragupta ii married his daughter prabhavati gupta into the vakatakas royal family and with its support conquered malwa and gujarat from the shakas kshatrapas kshatrapas in the last quarter of the 4th century and nomadi Culturally, however, the Vakataka kingdom served as a channel for the transmission of uh, Brahmanical ideas and social institutions to the south. The Vakataka power was followed by that of the Chalukyas of Badami, who played an important role in the 
history of the deccan in south india for about 2 centuries until an around 757 when they were overthrown by their feudatories the rashtrakutas the chalukyas claimed their descent from brahm brahm sorry brahma and brahma or manu or the moon they posted that their ancestors ruled at ayodhya but all this was done to acquire a legitimacy and respectable uh, in actual actuality they seem to have been a local canaries people who were accommodated in the ruling varna with brahmanical blessings the chalukyas set up the her kingdom towards the beginning of the 6th century in the western deccan they established their capital at vatapi modern badami in the district of bijapur which forms part of karnataka they later branched off into several independent ruling houses but the main branch continued to rule at vatapi for two centuries during this period no other power in the deccan was as important as the chalukyas of badami until we come to vijayanagara in later medieval times on the rise of the shatavahana power in the eastern part of the peninsula there arose the ikshvakas in the krishna Gup- uh, krishna guntur region they seem to have been a local tribe who adopted the exalted name of the ikshvakas in order to demonstrate the antiquity of their lineage and also claim it to the brahmana they have left behind many monuments at uh, Nagarjuna Konda and Dharani Kota, they began the practice of Lord land grants in the Krishna Guntur region where several of their copper plate inscriptions have been discovered. The Ikshvakas were supplanted by the Pallavas. The term Pallava means creeper and is a Sanskrit version of the Tamil word Tondhai which also carries the same meaning. The Pallavas were possibly a local tribe who established their authority in the Tandai Nadu or the land of creepers. It however took them some time to become completely civilized and accepted because in Tamil, the word Pallava is also a synonymy of robber. The authority of the Pallavas extended over both southern Andhra and northern Tamil Nadu. They set up their capital at Kanchi, identical with the modern Kanchipuram. With under them became a town of temples and Vedic learning. The early Pallavas came into conflict with the Kadambas who had established their control over northern Karnataka and Konkan in the 4th century. They claimed to be Brahmanas and generously rewarded their fellow caste men. The Kadamba kingdom was founded by Maurya Sharman. It is said that he came to receive education at Kanchi but was unceremoniously driven out. Smarting under this insult, the Kadamba chief set up his camp in a forest and defeated the Pallavas, possibly with the help of the forest tribes. Eventually, the Pallavas avenged the defeat by the recognition the Kadamba authority by formally investing Maori Sherman with the royal insigns insignia. Maurya Sharman is said to have performed 18 Ashwamedas or horse sacrifices and granted numerous villages to Brahmanas. The Kadambas established their capital at Vijayanti, oh sorry, Vijayanti or Banavasi in North Kanara, district of Karnataka. The Gangas were another important contemporary dynasty of the Pallavas. They established their kingdom in southern Karnataka around the 4th century. The kingdom was situated between that of the Pallavas in the east and of the Kadambas in the west. They are called the Vishen Ganga or Gangas of Mysore in order to differentiate them from the eastern Gangas who ruled in Kalinga from the 5th century onwards. For most of their region, the western Gangas were feudatories of the Pallavas. Their earliest capital was located at Kolar which given its gold mines may have helped the rise of this dynasty. The Western Gangas made land grants mostly to the Jainas. The Kadambas also made grants to the Jainas, though they favored the Brahmanas more. The Pallavas, for their part, granted numerous villages free of taxes, largely to the Brahmanas. We have as many as 16 and charters of the early Pallavas. A few, which seem to be earlier, are written on stone in Prakrit, but most of them were recorded on 
copper plates in Sanskrit. The villages granted to the Brahmanas were exempted from payment of all taxes and forced labor to the state. This implied that these were collected from the cultivators by the Brahmanas for their personal use and profits. As many as 18 types of immunities were granted to the Brahmanas in the Pallava grant of the 4th century. They were empowered to enjoy the fruits of the land so granted and exempted from payment of land tax, from supply of forced labor, from supply of provisions to royal officers living in the town, and free from the interference of royal agents and constabulary. The Pallavas, the Kadambas, the Chalukyas of Badami and their other competitors were great champions of Vedic sacrifices. They performed Ashwamedha and Vajapayi sacrifices which legitimated their position, enhanced their prestige and enormously increased the income of the priestly class. The Brahmanas therefore emerged as an important class at the expense of the peasantry from whom they collected their dues directly. They also received as gift as a gift say substantial proportion of the taxes collected by the king from his subjects. The Kalabra Revolt Although the period between Anno Domini 300 and 750 was extremely important for state formation and agrarian expansion in the peninsula, very little is known about what happened at the tip of the peninsula after the eclipse of the Cholas, the Cheras and the Pandyas. The only important event is a revolt led by the Calabras in the 6th century. The Calabras seem to have been a tribal people who captured power particularly at the cost of the Cholas and ruled for 75 years. Their rule also affected the Pallavas as well as their neighboring contemporaries. The Calabra are called evil rulers who overthrew innumerable kings and established their hold on the Tamil land. The Calabra revolt was a powerful peace and protest directed against the landed Brahmanas. They repeated teaching that those who attack land grants are condemned to hell for 60,000 years fail to change their minds. They put an end to the Brahmadhyaya rights granted to the Brahmanas in numerous villages. It appears the Kalabras were of Buddhist possession as they patronized Buddhist monasteries. The Kalabras revolt was so widespread that it could be Valid only through the joint efforts of the Pandyas, the Pallavas, and the Cholas, Chalukyas of Badami. By the last quarter of the 6th century, according to a tradition, the Kalabras had imprisoned the Chola, the Pandya, and the Chera kings, which underlines how formidable their revolt was the confederacy of the kings formed against the Kalabras, who had revoked them. Land grants made to the Brahmanas shows that the revolt was directed against the existing social and political order in South India. In it therefore appears that some land grants had been made between Anno Domini 300 and 500 to the Brahmanas by the kings of the Deep South. The Sangam texts tell us that villages were granted to the warriors by the chief for their acts of bravery. Land grants seem to have stimulated agrarian expansion under the Pallavas in South Andhra and North Tamil Nadu from the end of the 3rd century onwards, but they seem to have adversely affected the peasants. Conflict between the Pallavas and the Chalukyas The principal interest in the political history of peninsular India from the 6th to the 8th century centers around a long struggle for supremacy between the Pallavas of Kanchi and the Chalukyas of Badami. The Pandyas who were in control of Madurai and Tirunelveli districts of Tamil Nadu joined this conflict as a poor third. Although both the Pallavas and the Chalukyas championed Brahmanism, performed Vedic sacrifices and made grants to the Brahmanas, they two quarreled with each other over plunder, prestige and territorial resources. Both tried to establish supremacy over the land lying between the Krishna and the Tungabhadra. This dome was again the bone of contention in the in late medieval times between the Vijayanagara and the Bahamani kingdoms. Time and again, the Pallava princes tried to 
क्रॉस द तुंगभद्रा विच फॉर्म द नेचुरल हिस्टोरिक बाउंड्री बिटवीन मिनी ए किंगडम ऑफ द डेकन एंड डीप साउथ द स्ट्रगल कंटिन्यूड ओवर द पीरियड ओवर ए लॉन्ग पीरियड विद वारिंग फॉर्च्यून्स द फर्स्ट इंपॉर्टेंट इवेंट इन दिस लॉन्ग कॉन्फ्लिक्ट टू प्लेस ड्यूरिंग द रिजन ऑफ पुलिकेशन टू एन एट ओमली सिक्स नॉट नाइन टू फोर्टी टू द मोस्ट फेमस चालुक्य किंग ही इज नोन टू अस फ्रॉम द यूलॉगी रिटर्न ऑन हिम बाय द कोर्ट पॉइंट रवकृति इन द आई होल इंस्क्रिप्शन द इंस्क्रिप्शन इज एन एग्जाम्पल ऑफ द पोइटिक एक्सलेंस अचीव इन सांस्क्रिट एंड डिस्पाइट इट्स एक्सग्रेशन इज अ वैल्यूबल सोर्स फॉर द लाइफ ऑफ पुलकेशन ही सब्जिकेटेड द कदम्बा कैपिटल एट बनवासी एंड कंपेलेड द गंगास ऑफ माइसूर टू एक्नोल हिज सुजरेंटी He also defeated Harsha's army on the Narmada and checked his advance towards the Deccan. In his conflict with the Pallavas, he almost reached the Pallava capital, but the Pallavas purchased peace by ceding their northern provinces to Pulakeshin II. Around then, around the sixth century, Pulakeshin II also conquered the entire area between the Krishna and the Godavari, which came to be known as the province of Vengi. Here, a branch of the main dynasty was set up and is known as the Eastern Chalukyas of Vengi. However, Pulakeshin's second invasion of Pallava territory ended in failure. The Pallava king Narasimha Varman, around only 630 to 868, occupied the Chalukya capital at Vatapi in about around only 642, when Pulakeshin too was probably killed in a battle against the Pallavas. Narasimha Varman assumed the title of Vatapi Kunda or the conqueror of Vatapi. He is also said to have. defeated the cholas the cheras the pandyas and the kalabras towards the end of the 7th century there was a lull in this conflict which was again resumed in the first half of the 8th century the chalukya king vikramaditya ii anno domini 733 to 45 is said to have overrun kanchi three times in anno domini 740 he completely routed the pallavas his victory ended the Pallava supremacy in the far south, although the running sorry ruling house continued for over a century thereafter. However, the Chalukyas were unable for long to enjoy the fruits of their victory over the Pallavas because their own hegemony was brought to an end in an autumn of seven fifty seven by the Rashtrakutas temples. Besides the performance of Vedic sacrifices, the worship of of Brahma, Vishnu, and Shiva, especially of the last two, was becoming popular. From the seventh century onwards, the Alvar saints, who were great devotees of Vishnu, uh, popularized the worship of uh, this god. The Nayanars rendered a similar service to the cult of Shiva. Uh, from the seventh century onwards, the cult of Bhakti began to. dominate the religious life of uh, south indians and the alvars and nayanars played a great part in propagating it the pallava kings uh, constructed a number of stone temples in the 7th and 8th centuries for housing these god these gods the most famous of them are the seven uh, seven rath temples at mahabalipura at a distance of 65 kilometers from chennai these were built in the 7th century by narsimha varman who founded the port city of mahabalipuram or mamallapuram the city is also famous for the shore temple which was a structural construction erected independently and not a hewn out of rock in addition the pallavas constructed several such structural temples at their capital kanchi a very good example was the kailasnath temple built in the 8th century The Chalukyas of Bathami erected numerous temples at Aihol, which has a many as seventy from about an or only sixteen. The work was continued in the adjacent towns of Bathami and Patidakal. Patidakal has ten temples built in the seventh and eighth centuries. The most celebrated of which are the Papnatha Temple, an or uh, common an or only six eighty, and the Virupaksha Temple, an or only seven forty. The first of these, although thirty meters long, have a low and standard tower in the northern style. The second was constructed in purely southern style. The latter is about forty meters in length and had a very high square and store storied tower, Shikara. 
the temple walls uh, temple walls are adorned with beautiful pieces of a sculpture representing scenes from the ramayana we have uh, no clear idea of how these early temples were maintained after the 8th century land grants to temples became a common practice in south india and usually they were recorded on the walls of the temples most temples were managed by the brahmanas by early medieval times such temples came to own three three fifths of the arable land and became centers of religious rituals and caste based ideology in south india however the earliest temples seem to have been constructed and maintained out of the taxes directly collected by the king from the common people some temples in karnataka under the chalukyas were erected by jaina traders the common people worshiped their village village gods by offering them paddy and toddy but those who could afford it might have made rich offerings to acquire status and satisfy their religious carvings demands on the peasantry to conduct wars to cultivate art and literature to promote religion and to maintain the administrative staff enormous resources were needed these were apparently provided by the peasantry the nature of burdens imposed on the agrarian communities was more or less the same in the vakatka and the pallava kingdoms also the former was in vidarbha and maharashtra and later its southern andhra and northern tamil nadu in addition to land tax this which was a part of the produce the king could demand donations of cereals and gold and could board certain trees such as the palmia palmiara sorry uh, palmiara to obtain salt and substances derived from plants such as sugar and liquor of course all the natural resources beneath the earth in the villages belonged to him in addition he demanded flowers and milk wood and grass and could compel the villagers to carry loads free of charge the king was also entitled to force force and labor or visiting when royal officials visited the villages either to collect taxes or to punish criminals and also when the army was on march the rural communities had to fulfill several obligations they had to supply bullocks for carts and provide beds charcoal ovens cooking pots and attendants this whole list of imposts indicate that the state made a heavy demand on the labor and produce of the peasantry most of these are covered by the 18 types of immunities granted to the brahmanas from the 4th century anno domini onwards later more and more demands were made on the peasantry land grants and rural expansion these numerous demands made by the king on the agrarian population presuppose a capacity to pay on the part of the peasantry collection could not have been possible without an increase in agricultural production in this period we witness the formation of new states in the trans vindian regions each state had a number of feudatory chiefdoms uh, which were small states within a large state each of them large or small paramount or feudatory needed its own administrative machinery and a substantial number of priestly and other functionaries every state therefore required resources that could be obtained from its rural base therefore the states could not multiply without the proliferation of a rural communities or an increase in the agricultural production of the existing villages it seems that in tribal areas the brahmanas were granted land and the tribal peasantry learned the value of preserving cattle and better methods of cultivation from them the peasants also learned from the brahmanas the new calendar that helped agriculture certain areas suffered from a dearth of labor power in order to sustain the economy of such areas it was also found necessary to make over some share croppers and weavers to the brahmanas as is known from an early pallava grant therefore the large number of grants made to the brahmanas played an important role in spreading new methods of cultivation and increasing the size of the rural communities this period saw three types of villages in south india ur sabha and nagaram the ur was the usual type of village inhabited by peasant castes who perhaps held their land in common it was the responsibility of the village headmen to collect and pay taxes on their behalf 
These villages were mainly found in southern Tamil Nadu. The Sabha type of village consisted of um, Brahmadeya villages or those granted to the Brahmanas and of um, Agrahara villages. The Brahmana owners enjoyed individual rights in the land but carried on their activities collectively. The Nagaram type of village consisted of a village settled and dominated by combinations of traders and merchants. This possibly happened because trade declined and merchants moved to villages. In the Chalukya areas, rural affairs were managed by village elders called Mahajana. On the whole, the period anno Domini 300 to 750 provides good evidence of agricultural expansion, rural organization and more productive use of land, social structure and Brahmanization. We can present a rough outline of the social structure that developed in this period. Society was dominated by princes and priests. The princes claimed the status of the Brahmanas or Kshatriyas, though many of them were local clean chiefs promoted to the second Varna through benef uh, benefactions made to the priests. The priests invented respectable family trees for these chiefs and traced their descent, descent from age old solar and lunar dynasties. This process enabled the new rulers to acquire acceptability in the eyes of the people. The priests were mainly Brahmanas, though the Jaina and the Buddhist monks may also be placed in this category. In this phase, priests through land grants gained in influence and authority. Many South Indian rulers claimed to be Brahmanas, which shows that the Kshatriyas were not as important in the South as in the North. The same seemed uh, seems to have been the case with the Vaishya Stota Varna system was introduced in South India. In practice, its operation was different from that in Aryavarta or the main part of North India. However, like the North, below the princes and priests came the peasantry, which was divided into numerous peasant castes. Possibly, most of them were called Shudras in the Brahmanical system. If the patient and artisan caste failed to produce and render services and payments, it was considered a departure from the established dharma or norm. Such a situation was described as the age of Kali. Kali. It was the duty of the king to put an end to such a state of affairs and restore peace and order which worked in favor of chiefs and priests. The title Dharma Maharaja was Dharma Maharaja was therefore adopted by the Vakataka, Pallava, Kadamba and Western Ganga kings. The real founder of the Pallava power, Simha Varman, is credited with coming to the rescue of Dharma when it was based with the evils typical of the Kali Yuga. This apparently refers to the, his uh, super suppressions of the Kalabra peasants uh, who upset the existing social order. I felt these titles were given by Brahmans because they are uh, they have received many grants for the Brahmanas. So uh, genuinely, it was not helpful. Uh, the uh, titles was not helpful for the Rajas because the remaining who are poor and uh, untouchables are very suffered from the these type of uh, kingdoms. That means. Kings uh, making uh, these uh, titles are useless, I thought. It's just my opinion. I'm not criticizing anyone. Chronology. Uh, 200 BC to Anna Domini 300. The ascendancy of the Shatavahanas over the Deccan and that of the Tamil kingdoms over Southern Tamil Nadu. Non-Ashokan epigraphs in Andhra and Karnataka in Prakrit. Anna Domini 300 to 500. Land grants to the Brahmanas by the Kings of the Deep South, 300 to 600, about two dozen states in the peninsula, including Vidarbha, uh, 300 to 750, rural expansions and better use of the land south of the Vindhyas, more state formations in the peninsula, 4th century, 18 types of immunities for the Brahmanas in peninsular India, the rise of Western Ganga rule in southern Karnataka, Chandragupta to capture Malwa and Gujarat from the Shaka. Kshatrapas, the Kadamba controlled northern Karnataka and Konkan. From now, Sanskrit became the official language in the peninsula. 
5th century the eastern gangas ruled kalinga from this century onwards 6th century the kalabra revolt the chalukyas set up their kingdom in the western deccan 6th to 8th century struggle between the pallavas of kanchi and the chalukyas of the badami 7th century emergence of the pallavas of kanchi the chalukyas of badami and the pandyas of madurai as major states the reason of the chalukya king pulakeshin to according to the ayur inscriptions 610 erection of temples 630 to 68 the reason of the pallava king narasimha varman 680 the papanath temple of pathadakal 733 to 45 the reason of the chalukya king vikramaditya to 740 the virupaksha temple of pathadakal 757 pallava hegemony brought to an end 775 the end of the role of the chalukyas of badami in the deccan um i would like to share something uh, that these titles are like uh, paid uh, titles thank you